So now we'll talk about Atomidate, which is another uh, medication which works on the GABA A receptors. So just like propofol, it causes allosteric modulation of that receptor. So remember that'll cause increased chloride um, flowing through this channel when the GABA is bound and the atomidate is bound, and that will hyperpolarize your cell membrane and decrease its, uh, its ability to communicate with other cells. The unique and excellent thing about atomidate is that it is very stable from a hemodynamic perspective. So you get cardiovascular stability, especially in comparison to propofol when used as an induction agent. So you get a little bit of decrease in blood pressure, but um, overall way more stable than propofol uh, when given in induction doses. But this comes at the expense of the risk for adrenocortical suppression. And this is one of the main reasons why people steer away from uh, this medication. So uh, dosing wise for this, you would give 0.2 to 0 0.5 milligrams per kilogram IV, obviously. Um, the time for one half distribution is about three minutes. And it's time for half elimination is about three to five hours. And again, just like propofol, it is the time for half distribution that determines its duration. So its duration is also going to be in the range of five minutes. This is what the automate molecule looks like. Um, notably, it is an ester. So it does undergo some ester hydrolysis. And it has this imidazole ring. which makes it lipophilic at physiologic pH. So unlike propofol, it does not need to be dissolved in a lipid emulsion. And then it also undergoes um, hepatic metabolism to an inactive form. The cardiovascular effects of this are just slight decrease in blood pressure. And uh, in general, it's, it's quite neutral. It can cause also just slight um, uh, decrease in a minute ventilation and apnea can occur as well. So similar to propofol in, uh, in that respect. And in the central nervous system, obviously, just like propofol, it is a central nervous system depressant because it works on the same receptors. Unfortunately, it seems to cause nausea instead of preventing nausea. So that is um, uh, perhaps a subtle but important difference between um, etominate and propofol for everyday use. We should talk about the endocrine effects of automidate because these are unique and important. Um, there is this risk of adrenocortical suppression and up, up to 72 hours after a single bolus, you can have um, suppression of the enzyme which is required to convert precur precursors into cortisol and aldosterone. So it's this enzyme called 11-beta-hydroxylase that is uh, reversibly inhibited by automidate. And this is required to um, convert the precursor into cortisol and aldosterone. So potentially, with a bolus of automidate, you can cause this. It turns out this probably doesn't happen to everybody, but people with sepsis... And if you are sick in ICU, this is more likely to happen. 
So these people are more likely to have less cortisol and less aldosterone after giving a tomidate. Uh, but since this doesn't seem to happen in everybody, there are certain uses for a um, where it is definitely going to be a better choice than propofol because of its um, hemodynamic stability profile. But we'll still put this down as a complication, so the 11 beta hydroxylase enzyme inhibition. And then um, really the other main negative effect of automidate is nausea slash vomiting, especially compared to propofol, which is our other excellent hypnotic agent. Um, the fact that this causes nausea, vomiting, and propofol doesn't um, means that for everyday use, even in, in absence of this effect, um, a lot of people would probably choose propofol just because it's less likely to make people nauseous.